The world's first unattended satellite broadcast ground station has been built by the Independent Broadcasting Authority at Chilworth near Southampton. This station uplinks British Satellite Broadcasting's five channels for the UK's DBS service and the whole project was completed in just two years. On July the 15th, 1987, the IBA granted a 15-year franchise to BSB for satellite television. The spacecraft specification required a minimum signal power of 59 dBW to be directed towards defined locations on the periphery of the service area. This level was chosen carefully to encourage a commercially attractive satellite design, capable of continuous transmission during satellite eclipse periods. These occur for about 80 days a year and could otherwise disrupt the program schedules. The Hughes Aircraft Company was selected by BSB to provide two HS376 satellites with 110 watt travelling wave tube amplifiers for each channel. A Delta rocket launched the first satellite in August 1989 with the second scheduled for about a year later. The satellites are to operate from a geostationary orbital position of 31 degrees west and the pointing accuracy and antenna performance is quite stringent to minimize the risk of interference to other services. After a period of specification and tendering, the Greenfield site at Chilworth became a scene of intense activity following the start of building work on the 21st of March 1988. The foundations were laid for the large antennas and Mac equipment building which was progressively made ready for the technical equipment by the autumn of that year. The dish mountings have been designed to ensure that the uplink aerials, with a pointing accuracy better than one-tenth of a degree, remain on station, despite the effects of wind loading in gusts of over 100 miles per hour. The eight-metre diameter antennas, each weighing over two tonnes, were first assembled on the ground, with very careful alignment of the surfaces using a laser marking technique before being hoisted into place on the support pedestals. For UK satellite broadcasting, the government adopted the IBA's DMAX system in compliance with the standards recommended by the EBU and European Commission. This transmission system is upward compatible to widescreen aspect ratio and enhanced picture quality. MAX signals are also suitable for the conditional access and Eurocipher systems used for picture scrambling. The DMAC encoders accept analog vision and sound signals fed by fibre optic links from BSB's studios in London. In addition to these, there are data and teletext inputs. As the whole station is designed for unattended operation, the encoders are arranged with one-for-one -one redundancy between the main and standby equipment. Automatic changeover is initiated by the DMAC encoder controller when any degradation is detected in the performance of the main equipment. The uplink was completed for operation on channels 4, 8 and 12 in September 1989. Equipment for channels 16 and 20, the 4th and 5th channels, has since been added and test transmissions on all five channels commenced in February 1990. Situated in the basement of the MAC building, there's a highly secure 200 kVA uninterruptible power supply to ensure smooth continuous operation of all the uplink equipment, even during short breaks in the main supply. Batteries can support the power for breaks of up to 30 minutes but there are also three Rolls-Royce diesel generators capable of producing one and a quarter megawatts, which normally start immediately as a mains failure. High power 17 gigahertz microwave transmitters are housed in a cabin located immediately behind the antennas in order to minimize losses. The cabin contains five pairs of main and standby Klystron amplifiers, each able to deliver up to 1400 watts of RF carrier power via the antenna combiner to one of the uplink dishes. Circularly polarized signals in the lower half of the DBS feeder link band are transmitted to the satellite. 
Also included in the cabin is a sophisticated in-orbit test system, specified by the IBA to allow a visiting technician rapidly and accurately to check the condition of each of the transmission paths through the uplink and the satellite transponders on any of the five operating channels. A beacon receiver is used to monitor satellite movements, which are tracked by the dishes via an advanced smooth step track steering system, incorporating a memory which recognizes the spacecraft's maneuvers and predicts its position. With a dish of this size and a beam width of only 0.14 degrees, precise direction is essential. To overcome any reduction in gain due to ice and snow on the antenna's active surfaces, 30 kilowatts of space heating has been built into each of the dishes. Warm air can also be blown across the feed horn to prevent icing. A pair of uplink antennas have been installed to ensure continuous service during maintenance periods. When both satellites are in orbit, the first dish will normally illuminate one of the satellites with three channels, while the remaining two channels operate via the other dish, which tracks the second satellite. The satellites will also be tracked by BSB's telemetry and control dishes, which are used to monitor the condition of the payload and transmit commands to the satellites to ensure that they remain within their 75 kilometer box in space. The Chilworth uplink is located in a natural bowl which provides screening against interference. The condition of each item of the uplink equipment is monitored electronically and the status of the whole system is readily available to maintenance staff on the station controller display. The station controller also interfaces with the regional operations centre at Croydon, which is responsible for the operation of the IBA's terrestrial transmitters in the south of England. A comprehensive range of alarm indications are built into the monitoring system to alert the operators who can remotely control the uplink equipment by overriding the automatic commands of the station controller. The off-air sound and picture quality is also monitored at Croydon, using similar receiving equipment to that available to the average domestic viewer. As the IBA is the statutory broadcaster for all five BSB channels, the coverage and receive signal levels are continuously checked at remote footprint monitoring stations. These are situated on the periphery of the primary service area, where they provide the greatest sensitivity to any movement of footprint boresight position. The footprint monitoring station at Dover has two sets of equipment. One receives signals from the Olympus satellite to check for possible interference as it operates on channel 20, the same as BSB. A quiet channel is also measured to determine downlink attenuation resulting from rainfall and other atmospheric effects. The other footprint monitoring stations only receive on BSB channels, continuously recording the signal level and comparing it with the minimum required power level of 59 dBW. The measurements of all of the remote monitoring stations are telemetered to the master station at Croydon. Dr. Mike Holt, in charge of the footprint monitoring system, explains. Data from the footprint measuring sites is received on this modem and stored on the hard disk of a personal computer. The data itself consists of um, the power reading in terms of power flux density, decibel watts per square meter, measured on each channel every two minutes. In addition, we record the variation during that period and the sky temperature as measured on a quiet channel. This is a graph of the sky noise temperature from three of our measurement sites. It shows that at two of them the, the temperature is fairly constant, indicative of fair weather, whereas at the third site there's quite a uh, very uh, strong variations probably due to rain fronts passing over the site. At two of the sites the power level is fairly constant as we would expect but at the third site we have dips in the signal power 
corresponding to the times at which the sky noise is high. This equipment is so sensitive that we can detect variations of less than a half a decibel uh, during the day. Uh, from this site in particular, we can see a daily variation, which is probably due to thermal stressing of the satellite antenna. We do an analysis of the data from, from the, all the sites and compare it with the predicted levels for various bore site positions in order to get uh, a measured contour. And this is then available to us to display. The creation of the DBS uplink with its advanced level of automatic monitoring and remote control is an achievement demanding expertise available to few organisations in the world today and it was officially opened by His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent on the 9th of May 1990. Lieutenant Colonel Sir James Scott, the Lord Lieutenant of Hampshire, greeted His Royal Highness before introducing him to the IBA's Director of Engineering, Dr John Forrest. Also there, the IBA's Chairman George Russell, Brian Sorkeld, Head of Satellite Engineering, and Dave Hinchcliffe, who was in charge of the Chilworth project. He then went on to open the uplink. After the opening ceremony, the Duke of Kent, who has strong links with the electronics industry, was shown the Mac encoders, where BSB's pictures are first scrambled before transmission. The exit from the Mac building provided a vantage point for His Royal Highness to view the whole site, including BSB's telemetry and control dishes. A detailed explanation of the IBA aerials was given by Roger Spencer, the maintenance manager responsible for the Chilworth uplink. His Royal Highness received a commemorative souvenir album before leaving for a private visit to the IBA's engineering headquarters at Crawley Court. 114 IBA engineering staff contributed to this project and its completion within a timescale never before attempted for a satellite ground station of such an advanced nature and complexity, marks the beginning of a new era in satellite television.